Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm kind of bummed out. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Peter Carr. So, wasn't planning on doing this, this kind of spur of the moment. Um, I released an episode recently about Peter Carr, an interview talking about MFU programs, quant programs. Super jazzed, super excited to have him on the channel again. I had him on a while back. Um, but I made this episode... We recorded it January 15th, I believe. And then I emailed Peter back and said, hey, can you take a look at this when you get a chance? It takes me like a week typically to interview or to edit these interviews because they're like an hour plus. So like, can you guys see this? You know, I think the interview is like an hour 15. Uh, it takes me like significantly longer to cut these things back because they're usually like an hour and a half and they get trimmed back to like an hour 10 or to an hour somewhere in there. So I emailed Peter and said, hey, can you take a look at this? I've got it all set up, decided to launch it, you know, let me know. And I didn't hear back from him. So I thought, well, he's busy, right? This guy's professional. He's running a program. He's slammed. I'm not going to bug him. I'll wait. And I waited a few weeks and it's probably about a month. And then I emailed him again and said, hey, like, I'm going to launch this on Tuesday. It's part of the Talking Tuesday podcast with Fancy Quant. Um, you know, just let me know if you have any issues or concerns. And I get an email back and the email says, I am out of the office until further notice. <sighs> so I have like no idea what's going on with this. And so I'm like, should I post it? Should I wait? I don't know. I'm like, Peter's always been super grateful for doing the, the interviews together. He's always excited to be on the channel and I'm always super excited to have him. And so I thought I'll just publish it. And so I published it. I think yesterday, which was March 1st. And later in the day, I get an email from one of his colleagues saying, hey, I need to talk to you like basically as soon as possible. So now I'm starting to worry. I'm like, this, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be like stepping on toes with this. So I call her and say, hey, you know, what's going on? This is Dimitri Bianco. And then she notifies me that Peter has had some health issues and it's not looking so good. So... I was requested to, you know, add dates to everything because they don't want people to think that like, you know, he's recovered and like, things are going well. And so I go on immediately. My LinkedIn posts about the video. I add on there the date, which was January 15th for this interview. And then I go in and I add, you know, like the title. I change the title on the video so people know this is from January here. So now I'm like, I'm worried, right? I mean, I, I didn't know anything was going on. So... I'm kind of like waning, hoping, praying that something good happens and that, you know, think things will go back to normal here. And then today I wake up, it's March 2nd, and I see all of a sudden somebody comments on my YouTube channel, you know, rest in peace, Peter Carr. I'm like, I don't know, like, if they know or like, I, di I didn't know he had passed or not. So I go straight on to LinkedIn and of course I look on there. Yeah, and some of his colleagues and close friends had posted, you know, he'd passed away. I believe he passed away March 1st. Um, but I thought today I'd talk a little bit about Peter just because it's, it's a hard thing to think about in the sense of the quant community just in itself. It's hard as a human being thinking about you know, friends, con contacts, professional contacts, people you're close with passing away. And so I thought I'd just talk a little bit about who he was. And of course, I spent, you know, I don't know, a couple hours today on my phone, just scrolling through and just reading all the stories and all the comments about, you know, Peter and how people met him and the great things he did for them. And one of the things that really stuck out was that everybody kept mentioning Peter was such a great leader. And all the stories are about people that are like me. They're no-name people. They work in the quant industry or they're students wanting to get into the quant industry. And Peter was always there to help everybody. And I think that's a big takeaway, something that like made me feel special. But I'm also glad that he's done it for so many other people. And he's always been super excited and super involved in the industry. And so I figured I'd talk a little bit too about how I met him. Um, so... Peter came up on my radar in grad school. I saw a paper he published. Of course, if you look at all the papers he's published, like tons and tons of papers uh, with also other well-known quants in the industry. 
uh, many of them around stochastic processes, stochastic calculus, and derivative pricing. And so I kind of saw him on the radar. I kind of understood uh, who he was. I saw he got, you know, changed careers. He was the head of the NYU uh, Financial Engineering Masters. And I just kind of watched him from afar, just kind of on the radar, kind of watching him and following career-wise what he's doing, what he's doing with NYU's program. And I'm also following other, you know, program directors in general. And I made a video, I don't even remember which video it was, and he commented on the video that he enjoyed the video basically, or he gave some feedback, and it says on there, Peter Carr. And I'm like, there's got to only be one Peter Carr that would comment. Um, so I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool, right? Like a famous quant's actually like commenting on my, my channel. So that's kind of how it kicked off as he kind of commented. And then I started doing the podcast, as many people know, as kind of a form or kind of way for me just to talk and release and chat about quant things, career things, life things. And I really enjoy bringing on people that I like. I personally find super interesting people I follow. Um, I don't just bring on generic people, which sometimes it might seem like that, but these are people typically that are viewed highly in the industry or for one reason or another, I view quite highly. And so I reached out to him and I was like, hey, would you mind coming on the podcast? I would like just to do like an informational interview just learn more about you. And he was like, oh, I'd love to. I'm more excited. I'm like excited to come on and everything. Uh, I'm a big fan of your YouTube channel. <laughs> and so now I'm kind of like nerding out like, like <laughs> I don't know, someone I'm looking up to is actually on the channel. Uh, and they actually are a fan of me on the same token. So that's kind of how we got connected. And then working with him though on these interviews, uh, you guys see the interview itself and, you know, excited as well. Peter mentioned like, basically like it's hard being on video and being on YouTube, right? He's like nervous of being on camera, which is like pretty amazing because I just feel like he's so famous. This should be like super smooth and he teaches and everything. But he mentioned he's a little bit like camera shy with it. And you can tell somewhat in the interviews. But the best part of these entire interviews is the piece that you guys don't see. And it's good in a way. Like I'm really glad, I guess you, did, <laughs> you didn't see it, I guess. I don't know. I would love to share it somehow, but it's also more of like a personal moment of like after the interviews we've had, the, the two I've done with him, like I'm just nerding out. Like I'm so excited to talk to another quant and we can talk math and stats and careers and like famous people and like, I don't know. And one day he showed me, pulled up this video, an older, uh, not video, picture, it's older picture. And he's going through like, Mar it's Markowitz and it's Fisher Black and it's, you know, Myron Scholes. And he's like pointing all these people out and telling stories about, you know, meeting these people and kind of being, I guess like me, somewhat starstruck with him is being starstruck with, you know, like Fisher Black, for example, and presenting at this conference. And so it's just these like moments, like as a quant, I try to explain this to a lot of people, but I don't think anyone understands me. At least I don't feel like they do. I know a lot of you do as subscribers, but like in general, especially in like the finance and banking and places I go in universities, they don't understand, like when I say there's not many quants out there, guys, there's really not many quants out there. Like I don't have many people I can like sit and shoot the breeze with and just chat with like genuinely and that aren't going to get offended and that can talk about technical topics, can talk about issues in the industry. So I got some great advice, career advice and some great storytelling on Peter and his career. Uh, and he was like kind of giving anecdotes of like, this is kind of what I did. I understand where you're coming from. This is kind of what I would do. And I really enjoyed the mentorship from him because of who he is and the success he's had. And also the fact that he just took a genuine interest in me. Like he wasn't there to promote anything. He wasn't there to like be high and mighty. It was more or less like, hey, we're colleagues or like, I don't know, quants of some sorts, just general quants or general people. Uh, I'm just giving you some advice because I've been through some similar things. And so it was just great to get the advice from him, the understanding from him. It was also great to just nerd out and just talk about like stats and math things and what their programs are working on. Uh, I asked a little bit about his papers and things, for example. Like these are things that really excite me, but there's really not a lot of people that can just sit down and have a casual conversation about this, especially on the banking side. The banking side where I work is there's some quants, the culture's struggling. It's so brand new. No one really understands what's going on. But the investing side, so more like derivative product pricing and all that, like Peter's side, 
uh, there's a whole bunch of interesting people over there and I don't get that exposure. So kind of having him as like this window into this was just really enjoyable for conversations after that. Like they're just amazing conversations, just really fun for me. And I always felt bad because I felt like I took up more of his time than I should have. Uh, but it was great. And when I was notified of his somewhat condition and things that were going on that kind of all of a sudden sprung up last minute and like whatnot, uh, his colleague mentioned to me that, you know, basically Peter really thought like I was doing a, a good job with the YouTube channel. Uh, and for me, that was like a, a big, I don't know, a big boost to confidence because in many ways I'm kind of going out of, out of the quant finance realms. I'm not really going with the status quo. I'm kind of rocking the boat a little bit. And sometimes I feel like I'm a crazy person because I don't see a lot of support behind me. Uh, Peter is one of those people that was more than willing to help me in any way, shape or form that he could, um, which I absolutely loved. I loved having, I always felt like I had like some, some backup, like, you know, if I, I need to get an excellent guest or something, or I need to get an insight on a quant program, I could reach out to Peter and Peter was more than happy to connect me to people from other programs. So other program directors, for example, he was always there as a helping hand. And so these are just kind of these opportunities. I'm just trying to like replay my head the last you know day or two here, really thinking about our interactions. Um, I had two interviews with him. I also had, uh, he invited me to speak on a panel as well with a few other, you know, quants in the industry. Uh, but our relationship definitely was not as, I don't know, people think like I knew him so well and I didn't, I really didn't, my, our relationship was so short. I just, it, we didn't have enough time. I mean, we did two interviews. I did a panel with him, I emailed him back and forth, but reading like the comments on here on, on LinkedIn, uh, of people that knew him in long term, like he's just a legend and he's done so much for so many people and it's really making me focus more so on, which I've been trying to do a little bit more of, which is trying to really invest in the people around you. So students, quants, like this channel in general, I'm trying to help as many people as possible because life is going to be short, whether you like it or not. And I know that sounds kind of harsh, but I've been thinking about this for the last four or five years here. Um, I lost a daughter of terminal illness back in 2019. Uh, I lost my grandma in 2020. I had my my daughter, uh, my current daughter in 2020 as well. And so life just seems very short, very volatile, very unpredictable. And then now as we're looking at, I'm just kind of like throwing my hands up and leaving the industry as a whole, at least for a short period here, hiatus. Um, when I say industry, I mean banking. I prefer maybe to go in a different route, different direction with quant finance. But things are short. Um, trying to enjoy what you have, trying to do the best with what you have and not just wasting time to waste time, which is one of the big reasons I left my, my last job um, and the job before that as well. So I don't know, guys. I'm kind of out of out of words. I'm still trying to like process and think about the impacts here. I am really happy, though, reading through like the comments and seeing all the people that, you know, are supportive and, you know, all the people's lives that Peter kind of touched in many ways. I think he touched probably many more lives than he probably ever realized. Um, but yeah, so those are kind of my thoughts on it. Um, that's kind of the backstory as well on the recent episode, which I was not expecting to have kind of the timing it did, but definitely grateful that I had the opportunity to squeeze him in in January and sit down and chat with him and kind of pick his brain about quant programs and structuring these. So anyways, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.